in prayer and in the Word. When I'm overwhelmed, do I go to the comment section of my favorite YouTube or Facebook page to see what everybody thinks, or do I open the Word to see what God thinks? And in a way, when we talk about this battle of renewing our mind, isn't there a sense that we have already lost the battle if the enemy is constantly in my thoughts? If all I can think about is the, the, the things that are going on in the world, the things that I don't want to think about, haven't I already lost that battle? Let me show you a verse here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Again, the Apostle Paul. It says, For although we live in the flesh and we have these earthly minds, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. So when my mind is, pre is possessed by all these other things, if I can tr have my mind renewed and transformed, and realize that I'm not fighting a fleshly battle, and the weapons of my warfare are not of the flesh, then I can turn to God. The, the verse continues, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. He said, then listen to this part. Here, look, I think this is verse 4 of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And here's the key. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Um, and I think this is where, this is the turning point for us today, and this is what we need to be able to do, is begin to take our thoughts captive. Um, so we can either take our thoughts captive, or we can be held captive by our thoughts. How much of the issues in our world today, think about this, are caused, or created, or started by someone's thought life, by a thought about, um, I don't like that idea, I don't like that person. Um, this, whatever this is I'm seeing that has invaded my mind or my, my other senses has caused me to create thoughts that are not true, pure, just, uh, honorable, commendable, and all those sorts of things. Now, there's a little note about this verse here in 2 Corinthians that the weapons of the world are learning, personal influence, and impressive credentials, rhetorical polish, and all those sorts of things. That's what the world looks at. We'd like a good, a good Twitter feed, right? A good Twitter post, a good Facebook post that just... Snaps when you when you read it, and you hear it, it just sounds real good. And so many times I've read those and thought, but that's not truth. Uh, but these are things that Paul tells us he has discounted because those are weapons of the world, and the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. Paul says he doesn't wage war as the world does or use their weapons. So I wanted to give us three quick things uh, today. Uh, and I spent the majority of time on the first one. The first one is this that we've seen from all these verses: is dwell, think on the things of God. Take your thoughts captive. When you find your mind, your thoughts, and drifting into those things that are not good, pure, true, lovely, take those thoughts captive and return them to God. And the, the one verse we read about, um, I uh, do all things in the name of Christ, I'm returning because he was sacrificed for me. <clears throat> so anyway, so dwell, think on the things of God. Second, and this would be very helpful to you as well, when we're overwhelmed by how uh, our thoughts lead us. Focus on God's work in the world. Ask yourself the question, what have you seen God doing around you? And uh, Sometimes we don't give God credit. Even there's little things that have happened. Uh, if you've had a terrible week, um, maybe one little thing went right. Well, maybe that was God sending you a message saying, hey, you know, I'm still there. I'm still watching for you. These things that have come into your life, I've allowed them for this season and for a time to, to mold you and form you into something new but you also need to take time to see that I'm still here. It's very easy to be distracted by the evil in our world. Uh, so praise and thank God that he's present. Uh, look for the new. What is God doing? And we are certainly in a time of uh, change. And everything is kind of up in the air now. What are, what are we doing about school? What are we doing about uh, just standing around talking to each other? Face masks and all the things that goes along with that. Uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. Which is the day in Acts chapter 2 when God released his spirit on the church. Uh, and Jesus had compared the Holy Spirit's work to the wind. Um, and But here in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is coming in greatly increased power. And it was appropriate that this event uh, be accompanied by a sound that is not like a gentle breeze, but like a mighty rushing wind. Look that up in Acts chapter 2 and read what Scripture says. Think about this. Our culture has dramatically shifted in less than three months. Um, if you would have predicted in January what this May would have looked like, uh, you would not have believed yourself. Um, but God knew, and He has walked ahead of you. He has prepared a way for us. 
Uh, and because of that, I can do the final thing, which is trust that God has your best interest at heart. Um, now, that does not mean that you will always be healthy, that you will be famous and successful, that you will prosper. It means that God will bring glory through you. He can do that if you allow Him to. Uh, if you are dwelling on the things of God, focusing on His work in the world and trusting in Him. So I wanted to close up with a passage that I thought was just really a good conclusion for what I've been trying to, to teach this morning. Uh, also from the Apostle Paul, but it's a letter to the Philippians uh, in chapter 1, verses 18. And to me, this was just a great summary of how we who have committed our lives to Christ, this is how we should go into the world. Paul says this, here it is again. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice because I know this will lead to my salvation through your prayers and help from the Spirit of Jesus Christ. My eager expectation and hope is that I will not be ashamed about anything, but that now, as always, with all courage, Christ will be on, highly honored in my body, whether by life or by death. That is the ultimate goal. Whether I die or whether I live, that Christ is honored. And that's why we trust Him, right? Verse 21, and this is pretty um, a well-known verse. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now, if I live on in the flesh, this means fruitful work for me. And I don't know which one I should choose. Paul says, if I die, it's a good thing. It's, it's a gain. God is glorified. But if I live and I continue to do His work, He's still glorified. Paul says in verse 23, I am torn between the two. I long to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Since I am persuaded of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that because of my coming to you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus may abound. They were going to rejoice because Paul had returned to them. They didn't know. They thought maybe he was going to be killed when he was in Rome. Just one thing, verse 27. As citizens of heaven, live your life worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or am absent, I will hear about you that you are standing firm in one spirit, in one accord, contending together for the faith of the gospel. Some powerful words there. Not being frightened in any way by your opponents. This is a sign of destruction for them, but of your salvation. And this is from God. Verse 29, For it has been granted to you on Christ's behalf, not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for Him. Since you are engaged in the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I have. And he's describing his present situation. And this is where we, we all are. We feel we're in this place of suffering. And this, these words from Paul in uh, Philippians uh, chapter 1, I hope they can encourage you. Uh, I want to give you one final illustration. i give you a preview of next week. Uh, and then pray for us. Um, but I began to, to wonder this week that I was prompted to, to wonder what is the word, why do we call this thing a coronavirus? So I looked it up. The word corona means crown. Uh, and the reason we call this a coronavirus is that the scientists who in uh, 1968, they came up with this term, they thought that the virus they were looking at resembled a solar corona. Uh, it's a bright crown-like ring of gases surrounding the sun. It's usually you can see it during an eclipse. So I've decided that one of the steps I'm going to take is that whenever I hear that word corona, I'm going to be reminded that it talks about a king to the one to whom truly all attention and honor and glory are due. And as I said, this is going to be the last Sunday, unless something really important comes up. You won't hear me talking about this topic, because next Sunday we're going to start uh, a series on Saul and David and Solomon, although we may not get to Solomon in 2020. Um, but I want you to read 1 Samuel 8 in preparation for next Sunday. Um, and there's a whole lot more I could say about that, but I'll probably save it for next week. Um, so let me pray and then give us a benediction. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who have tuned in today. I pray that you can help us to lay aside the weight, the things that distract us. Help us to focus on the good things in your work in the world. Help us to live as people of peace, um, people of, that manifest fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, patience, goodness, um, kindness, things that are so rare in our world today. Uh, we thank you for your word that we always have as a place to trust that's reliable, a source of hope. Uh, I pray a blessing on those that are watching today. Uh, may your spirit speak to their hearts even now in this moment. Uh, if there's someone watching who doesn't know you, uh, may they find the hope that you offer. 
uh, and ask this in Christ's name. So may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal encouragement and good hope by grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good work and word. And just let me remind you, I'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, Facebook Live is the plan, uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, and I'm going to post a, a song that has really been encouragement to me. If I played it, they'd shut us off here. Um, but it's, the, the song is called Hills and Valleys by Torrin Wells. And I'll post it in the comments after this video. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for tuning in today. God bless you. Have a great week.